Hello friends, welcome to Learn with Lakshman. Today we'll talk about types of research and it is the third part of types of research. In the part one and part two also we have seen the types of research. This is the concluding video on the types of research. Please subscribe to this channel if you are new to it and don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Try to understand other type of research that is called conceptual and empirical research. What is conceptual research and what is empirical research? Conceptual research is related to some abstract idea, ideas or theory. Abstract ideas which are not concrete, idea or ideas which are not concrete. That is the concept. We understand conceptual, the word conceptual is derived from the word concept. Concept is idea. So conceptual research is related to some abstract idea or a theory. It is related to that. Now it is generally used by philosophers and thinkers to develop new concepts or to reinterpret existing concepts. Try to understand this thing. Conceptual research is related to abstract idea or abstract theory. Simple enough. Conceptual research is related to abstract idea or abstract, abstract theory. Why? Because conceptual is related to concept and concept is idea or theory. Therefore, conceptual research is related to abstract idea or theory. And who use this research? Conceptual research is generally used by philosophers and thinkers. Why do they use this? Philosophers and thinkers use conceptual research to develop new concepts because they want to develop new concepts or they want to reinterpret the existing concepts. Understanding the point, say for instance, humanism is a concept. Okay, people talk about the concept called humanism. Now philosophers and thinkers carry out a research to speak about a new concept called post-humanism, or they'll speak about new ideas in humanism. They'll try to reinterpret the idea of humanism. That is their job. And who does it? No mathematician will go and try to speak about humanism, right? It needs to be a philosopher or some thinker and who will develop certain com concrete concepts or ideas, or will try to reinterpret the existing ideas. That is what you call conceptual research. Now see, on the other hand, because we are speaking about conceptual and empirical research. On the other hand, we are speaking about empirical research which relies on experience or observation alone. Empirical research relies on experience or observation alone, often without due regard to system or a theory. Try to understand this without due regard for a system or a theory. We have a few systems or theories, existing systems and theories. And we believe that these theories or these systems are true because we believe that they are built and they are based on certain foundations of research. Therefore, we use them. But empirical research does not believe in any system or any theory as a whole because it considers itself as empirical. That is why it is called empirical. Therefore, it relies totally on the observation or the data collected. If I have the data, and if I'm trying to analyze this data, then I'm not going to think about what other theory is saying. I'm just going to have this data with me and analyze and conclude. That is called empirical research. On the other hand, what is conceptual research? Conceptual research is the research that speaks about the concepts only. Remember, that thinks about the concept, thinks about the concepts and try to develop new concepts or try to reinterpret the given concept. I mean, this concept is there. Say, for instance, there is the concept of God. People will talk about the concept of God. Right. Now, thinkers, what will thinkers try to do? Thinkers will speak about the concept of our God and speak about the God as God. Not that, uh, It is not the God that, that is in a stone or in a statue or in anything. They speak about a God that exists everywhere. Right. So this is a 
reinterpretation of the idea of god there is also reinterpretation reinterpretation of the idea of evil now people try to say that there is god and evil in the human body itself so that is reinterpretation of the idea of good and bad so this is this is thinking about the concept and therefore we call we call it conceptual research in empirical research you are not thinking about any theory or idea it doesn't mean that you are not at all thinking about it you are thinking about it but you are not giving due regard to these things what are you giving importance to importance is being given to the data that is being given. okay empirical research relies on the experience or observations and experience and observations are the data with you on which you will make your conclusions therefore empirical research is called data based research it comes up with the conclusions which are capable of being verified by observations or experiments you can verify and you can experiment with those observations because these are data based experiment, experiments and experiences we can also call it experimental type of research why because it is based on the experiments and experiences that's why we can call it an experimental research in such research such in the sense in empirical research in such research it is necessary to get at facts first hand what is required we need to get at the fact first hand at their source at the source of what we try to do we try to reach the fact we try to reach the source of the fact and actively go about doing certain things to stimulate the production of desired information we go on doing certain things to take out the information let us have an examples of pavlov's dog right he has understood certain facts then he went on doing some experiments for he wanted to have some desired uh, desired information from it so this is what you call empirical research empirical research does not believe in theories while conceptual research believe in theories okay in such a research the researcher must first provide himself with a working hypothesis or guess as to what the probable result would be what is what is it the researcher must find or provide himself with a working hypothesis you need to have a working hypothesis hypothesis is a statement that you find hypothesis is something that you think would be the conclusion of this research and you need to have that hypothesis so you need to have that guess of the probable result that guess of the probable research then what does a researcher do researcher then works to get enough data to prove or disapprove the hypothesis collect the data prove that this is true the hypothesis is true or prove that hypothesis is not true these are the two two things then researcher sets up experimental design which he she thinks will manipulate the persons or the material concerned so as to bring forth the desired information then what the researcher will have to do researcher will have to set up the experimental design this experimental design according to the researcher manipulates the persons or the material concerned why so as to bring forth desired information because we need to have some desire the researcher needs to have some desired information so the researcher has to prepare an experimental design and then have to think of manipulating persons or material to have some some sort of information that is required for the research such a research is characterized by the experimenter's control over variables and the study and his deliberate manipulation of one of them to study its effect now researcher can manipulate it deliberately manipulate it such research is characterized by the experimenter's control over the variables i mean things variables are the things available there under study and his her deliberate manipulation of one of them to study its effect now which variable he will she will consider in the research now empirical research is appropriate 
when proof is sought that certain variables affect other variables in some way. Empirical research becomes effective or appropriate when proof is sought, found that certain variables affect other variables in some way, that this is a variable and it affects this variable in other way, and that is important. Evidence gathered through experiments or empirical studies is today considered to be the most powerful support possible for given hypothesis. Evidence gathered through experiments, evidence proofs gathered through experiments or empirical studies is today, today in the sense modern times or now considered to be the most powerful support possible for given hypothesis. If you are giving a hypothesis, you need to have the data or the evidence gathered through experiments or empirical studies. That is extremely important. Now, we have also to understand some other types of researches. Of course, these researches are also the part of the research types that we have seen earlier, but let's talk about them, them also. See, there are types called one-time research and longitudinal research. Try to understand what is one-time research and longitudinal research. From the point of view of time, we can think of research either as one-time research or longitudinal research. One-time research done at one time, that is called one-time research. And longitudinal research is the research that is done over a period of time. So in former, that is in one-time research, it is confined to a single time period. One-time research is confined to a single time period, whereas the later, that is longitudinal research, is research carried out on over several time periods. This is a simple classification. Now, research that is one time and longitudinal can be categorized as descriptive research and analytical research, qualitative research and quantitative research, and so on. This, this is a different kind of classification of the research. Okay, so this was about a one time research and longitudinal research. Now, Field setting research or laboratory research. This classification is very important for the students of humanities because we generally write uh, the method of research in our uh, synopsis, what method you're employing. And we either write laboratory method or survey method in it. So this is field setting research or laboratory research. That is what we call field setting research or laboratory research. Research can be field setting research or laboratory research or uh, simulation research. Simulation is both the researches depending upon the environment in which it is carried out. I mean, whether you are carrying out a research in laboratory or you are going to the field and collecting the data or whether you are carrying out research in the library. Okay, so this is field setting uh, research or laboratory research. The other one is clinical research and diagnostic research. The other type of research is clinical research and diagnostic research. Recent research can well be understood as clinical or diagnostic research. Such research follows case methods or in-depth approaches to reach the basic casual relations. Such studies usually go deep into the causes of things or events that interest us. Using very small samples and a very deep probing data gathering devices. This is clinical and diagnostic research. This is actually a research on very miniature levels, right? Such research follows case study methods or in-depth approaches to reach the basic casual relation. What are the basic casual relations? Stem cell research is clinical or diagnostic research, right? Stem cell research or any other research blood cell research, blood cancer research, these researches are called clinical researches or diagnostic research. Such studies usually go deep into the cases or things or events that interest us. And we are interested in, we not we, you know, we are not going to be interested in things, but certainly the medical practitioners or even students of literature can also go into such kinds of research, there is no doubt in it. But such studies usually go deep into the causes of things or events that interest us, usually very small samples and very deep probing data gathering 
devices are used in it. Okay, then there is exploratory and formalized research. Exploratory research is the research, I have seen research may be exploratory or it may be formalized. The objective of exploratory research is the development of hypothesis rather than their testing. I mean, they are not interested in testing the hypothesis, but in developing a hypothesis, whereas formalized research studies are those with substantial structure and with specific hypothesis to be tested. We have studied about this earlier also, but this is just a kind of classification that we need to understand. Then there is a type of research called historical research. Historical research is the research which utilizes historical sources like documents, remains, remains, means, remains of the cities, remains of the human bodies, or remains of anything, empires, etc., to study events or ideas of the past, including philosophy of persons and groups at any remote point of time. Then there is Conclusion-oriented research and decision-oriented research. See, research can also be conclusion-oriented. I think you understand what is conclusion-oriented and what is decision-oriented. So research can be conclusion-oriented or it can be decision-oriented. While doing conclusion-oriented research, a researcher is free to pick up a problem, redesign the inquiry as, a, as he proceeds, and is prepared to conceptualize his views. See, what are we talking about? Conclusion-oriented research. In conclusion-oriented research, a researcher is free to pick up a problem. A researcher can, keep, can pick, pick up a problem. It, a researcher can redesign the inquiry as he goes on doing the research and is prepared to conceptualize as he wishes according to his own wish. Decision-oriented research is always for the need of a decision. Because decision-oriented research is research carried out because some decision is taken. Need of a decision maker and the researcher in this case is not free to embark upon research according to his own inclinations. I mean, researchers can, the researcher cannot do anything as he wishes, wishes because it is the research done because some decision maker wants the researcher to carry out this kind of research. So this was about the types of research. I hope that this is a useful video for you. Thank you very much for watching it.